Um, you've now published five novels, and so a number of the students here are, are in a novel writing class, and and uh, I'm wondering what your challenge was in creating that first novel. You know, I mean, for me, drafting my first novel, I felt like I was diving into an ocean and learning how to swim in an ocean. There's so much I had to figure out what a novel was, and I'm just wondering if you could kind of frame it for these students. Um, what was your challenge in, in creating that first novel? So the first challenge was, I didn't know what I was doing, but that blissful ignorance is your best asset, I think, in anything that you do that is a hard, competitive business, because I didn't know what I didn't know, and that was such a good thing, because I would have thought, this is crazy, and run screaming the other way. And by the time that I realized I didn't know what I was doing, I'd already written 400 pages. So I thought, well, you know, I, I didn't realize until then I started learning that, and I have a lot of rejection letters to prove this from agents all over New York, that World War II novels just don't sell. This is what they told me. And I'm sure if you think about how many World War II novels are the biggest hits out there right now, you realize nothing sells until it sells. And so at that point, I thought, it's too late. I already wrote this book I was passionate about. And so I think that's one of the most important things, too, is, is you have to write a book that you are passionate about, it, not to worry about chasing a trend, mm -hmm. because by the time that you chase it, unless it's something you're passionate about, there's something to be said about writing something smart and maybe something that will probably fit well in a market, but not just because every vampire book out there is so popular. By the time that you write a vampire book and you write the whole thing and you get an agent and then you sell it and then you revise it, and it comes out a year after that, that's two years down the road minimum, and now everybody's moved on to zombies. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. just, you realize that, you know, you can't chase it like that. So that was important that I, I, the good news was with me, I was just writing something I was passionate about. And so with my first draft, my first mistake was that I, I wrote it almost like a screenplay. I remember giving it to every family member that was willing to read it in a three-ring binder, and my sister-in-law actually read it and said, I really love the premise of this and the story, but it actually reads like a screenplay. It's like your head, you're like, it's almost like you're following a camera from character to character, jumping, head hopping, what we call it, mm -hmm. jumping into their heads from paragraph to paragraph. And I said, yeah, what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought, okay, I need to start reading an enormous amount mm -hmm. and learning how to take the movie in my mind and put it on a piece of paper in a way that hopefully the reader can see something close to the same movie. And that's when I realized they were different art forms and I had to figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the, the biggest thing I learned was that. And I did remember, the, after I finished that whole first draft, if you take no, nothing away from today, take this. GMC is something I learned about once I finished the whole book. You need this, not only for a whole book, and I'll explain what it is, but ideally for every single scene or chapter. So are you familiar with GMC? We kind of sh do shorthand with that. Um, I'm sure you refer to it as something else, but we call it goals, motivation, conflict. Mm -hmm. And if you, I really didn't have that for the whole book, for every character. Every character needs a goal, a motivation, and a conflict. So why do, what do they want? Why do they want it? And why can't they have it? And if you put that, not only in the whole book, but the every single scene, you create tension and conflict in every single scene, that's what turns pages. So turning pages, you know, I would say, we'll probably get into this too, but that's, I would say, the GMC, and also um, raising questions. Every time you can raise a question for the reader that they, they can't help, it's like watching that terrible B movie at two in the morning. And you want to shut it off, but you can't, no matter how bad it is, you know, because you have to know how it ends, because you have to have that answer to some question they've raised along the way. That's what we try to do as writers. So you try to keep raising questions, and every time you answer them as you go along, then you raise another question. Mm -hmm. Makes it hard to put a book down. Mm 